Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Echo Hawk for Seattle Town Hall, the Echo Hawk Town Hall series. My name is Cindy. I'm going to be the moderator for tonight's town hall. We are coming towards the end of our town hall series where we go to all of the Seattle neighborhoods virtually and have a town hall in them. Uh, tonight is our Rainier Valley slash Othello town hall, and we're so excited to be uh, in your neighborhood tonight. Um, we'll go over the sort of agenda for tonight, which is really straightforward. We're going to hear a little bit from Colleen, and then we're going to open it up to Q&A. So if you are watching this on Facebook or YouTube, there should be a link in the description for how you can join our Zoom call if you'd like to ask your question to Colleen. Otherwise, feel free to just watch us on our live stream. Uh, Colleen, do you want to go ahead and kind of open us up? I do. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's town hall. I'm so glad to be doing this with my um, my dear friends, um, Cindy and Reed. And I know that we are excited about having Emily co-host or coasting tonight. Um, and it's just it's just great to be with you. I don't know about you, but I absolutely have been enjoying. Um, and you can see my little dog behind me. I have a COVID puppy who's um, running around behind me. Um, but I hope that everyone's enjoying this beautiful um, day. I, I know that, you know, uh, coming through COVID was so difficult and so um, hard. I hope that everyone's getting a chance to get outside, enjoy the sun. I, I know for me, the vitamin D is just doing wonders for me. So um, I hope that um, 
you all are having a great day out there today. And thank you so much for tuning in to this town hall. You know, I want to start with telling you a little bit about myself and why I'm running for mayor. Um, this is a time in Seattle where we have a chance to get some things really right, to figure out how this city moves forward. And it's so important. And I'm so grateful for you being here and your time. I want to tell you a little bit about my background. I was born and raised in a little rural Alaska town called Alaska, Delta Junction, where my family um, owned and operated a small motel. I grew up cleaning rooms and working the front desk and alongside my grandma and my seven siblings. And I um, really learned so much from living and working in small business. I also have some really amazing um, role models in my life and in my family. My uncle John Echo Hawk started the Native, Americans, Native American Right Fund uh, over 50 years ago now. My uncle Larry was a Democratic Attorney General of Idaho. I can still remember drinking, um, drinking tea out of his campaign mugs that my, my parents got. And I also um, am so proud to be the granddaughter of Katie John from Copper River area, Metasta Lake. She fought a 30 year legal battle for subsistence fishing and hunting rights all the way to the federal courts. She won it in a landmark decision. And I can still remember the conversations and the strategizing that she did um, right from her right from her couch in her house in Metasta Lake. So, so delighted to come from family who, who said, stand up for what's right do the right thing and serve the most vulnerable in your community. My family is no stranger to tough fights. I want to tell you why I'm stepping forward to run for mayor. I am running because right now Seattle has huge challenges. We all know it. We see it. We feel it. But we also have the potential to turn this around and get this right. And while we confront many serious problems, such as police accountability, how we recover from COVID, and the urgency of climate change, I believe the crisis, crisis we have to immediately tackle is the homeless emergency. You know, the election this year will be on November 2nd. Six years ago to the day on November 2nd, uh, the, the, the city, the mayor, and the city council declared a state of emergency over homelessness. It was like they pulled the fire alarm but didn't send the fire trucks. And since then, there's been so much finger pointing and infighting, and the culture in City Hall has become so toxic. And now, more of our neighbors than ever are experiencing homelessness. The status quo is not working for them. It's not working for anyone. Tonight, there will be three to 4,000 people who sleep outside on the streets of one of the most prosperous cities in the country. We know we can do better. I am running because I feel so frustrated and angry that we're not doing a better job for those folks experiencing homelessness, for our, for our parks, for our kids. We have to do better. So what do we do? Day one of an Echo Hawk administration starts with an emergency housing program. We actually have this um, program down on paper on our website. I want to invite you to check it out. You'll see that we have a 22 point plan to bring everyone who's outside inside. And you know, the goal is actually pretty simple. We find warm and dry and safe places for everyone to sleep at night. We create new pathways for our community who is experiencing homelessness. We bring together over a hundred outreach workers who will be supporting our homeless community and supporting small businesses. And we will also bring together a volunteer corps, people throughout our neighborhoods who want to support this work, who are saying to us over and over again, I care about the homeless community. I want to do something Thing, but there's been no plan. The Echo Hawk administration will have a plan and we will execute this plan so that we can support our neighborhoods, our folks who are experiencing homelessness. And we can do it in a way that, that honors who they are as human beings and honors who our neighbors, who our neighbors are and honors our small business owners and gives each of us um, a better understanding of how we all should work together for the common good in our city. Um, this is my priority. This is why I'm running for mayor. And I believe my life experience has uniquely prepared me to meet this moment in our city's history. You know, seven years ago, I became the head of She Seattle Club. We help and support urban native people who are experiencing homelessness. We feed people. Um, we do tons and tons of, of, of meals every single week. We operate a day shelter and we provide ways to reconnect with tribal culture, identity, and spirituality. And in the last few years, we started to build housing. We've had some great success. 
We're opening 80 studio units this October, another 125 units next June, and right behind that, another 200 units and a longhouse. This has made um, this has made me so happy and thrilled for our homeless community and for the folks that I serve at the Chief Seattle Club. We know that there are solutions to our crisis that's ahead of us. We've seen it, we know it, we feel it, and yet we have not had the leadership to move us forward. I am running for mayor because I know that this city is compassionate, generous, and progressive, and we want to serve our homeless community. Um, this is the time for transformational change, and that is um, what you will get with an Echo Hawk administration. You know, um, when we started thinking about this campaign and how we wanted to, to show up, one of the things we realized is that we want to listen. We've done almost 40 town halls in 40 different, um, well, in, let's see, 35 different neighborhoods. I'm lost track a little bit on, on how many we have done. And we are doing that because we need to listen. We need to hear from the community. I believe there's so many community um, innovations and creativity that have not been heard. We can, we can make awesome change together um, if we are heard and if we are listening. You know, um, I wanna close with this. Some people say that Seattle is dying. I don't think so. We're an amazing city with amazing people. We can do anything we set our mind to if we move forward with a new generation of leadership and we actually deal with the issues that are ahead of us and, and the other obstacles that are in our path. We can turn this around. I would be so honored to earn your vote and excited to have this conversation tonight to hear from um, you. Um, and I hope that um, folks who are on this call tonight and um, Feel like they can have a dialogue, ask questions, um, offer feedback. Like this is a time for us to have um, to be in good community with each other. So thank you so much. I'm going to pass it back to Cindy. Thank you so much, Colleen. And so we're going to open up to the Q and A portion now for this evening, and it's really straightforward. So if you are in our Zoom call, um, which many a few folks are. Feel free to raise your hand with using the reaction button at the bottom of your screen. There's a raise hand option, or you can use the chat as well, um, which uh, will allow folks, will allow us to be able to see uh, whatever questions you might have. Um, if you are watching us via Facebook or YouTube, please feel free to join us in the Zoom. There should be a link, or you can uh, comment uh, below the video. Any questions that you ask, we will get to Colleen. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So we do have a neighborhood captain for this uh, town hall. I want to welcome Emily uh, to go ahead and unmute yourself. And if you have a question, please ask Colleen. Hello, everybody. Hi, Colleen. It's really nice to meet you. Um, I'm really excited that you're running for mayor. Uh, one, because it, I've never lived in a city led by a woman of color mayor. Uh, and two, you come from a background in human services, which is also my background. So I really appreciate that perspective that you bring to the campaign and to your work. Um, so I live uh, in South Seattle. I live in New Holly specifically. Um, and there's been a lot of talk from the city uh, about equity and having an equity focused lens for all things. Um, mm -hmm. And there doesn't seem to be a really great cohesive definition for what equity means at the city level. And uh, for as an example, we in the South End recently learned that uh, Seward Park, which is one of the most heavily trafficked parks mm -hmm. um, in the South End, will no longer have a lifeguard. Um, that the Seattle Parks and Rec decided that out of the eight parks in the entire city, three of which are only in the South End, that would be the one to lose hmm. uh, a lifeguard. And in Seattle Parks and Rec's uh, announcement, they said that they made that decision based on equity, which was very confusing to me. So I'd be really curious to hear what your own definition is uh, for equity and how you might, what are some examples of how you see that potentially working yeah. uh, in your term as mayor? Oh man, Emily, I could talk about this for so long. So thank you so much for asking such an important question. You know, having a real lens of equity is part of the reason I'm running for mayor. You know, there were um, so many times years ago when I was working, when I first started the Chief Seattle Club, where I would, you know, find out about like some kind of meeting that's happening around homelessness. And one, I realized I wasn't invited. So then I'd have to figure out how to get invited. And now keep in mind, 
we are serving the folks in the city who are most impacted by homelessness. Native people have the highest rates of homelessness and still do in the city. And yet no Native people were invited to the meetings and policy making, um, policy making around homelessness. So, so I had to like, you know, push my way in there and try to figure out who the right people were to talk to. And then I would sit around the table and then, you know, they would be making all of this policy um, decisions and, and people would ignore me or wouldn't like, or would not seek my voice out at all. And so I have to, you know, push and push and try to find the right people to talk to, to finally make change. It's so severe that even on the national level, I can remember talking to a national leader and, and I, and I, and her saying to me, you know, Colleen, we've known that Native people have the highest rates of homelessness for a long time, and we just didn't know what to do. And so to me, equity, the reason I show the story is that if equity says that if you know the data, you know the information in, in the Native community, for instance, we know that, you know, homelessness began in this city in 1865 when there was a declaration of, of that Native people, or uh, sorry, a uh, uh, city ordinance, city ordinance number five that said Native people were not allowed in the city limits. When we know that, <coughs> sorry, I'm on my little soapbox. When we know that, that means that we have to respond to the historical, uh, uh, the historical, not just trauma, but what's the word I'm looking for, the historical um, wrongdoing that was done and, and, and look at the impact and then directly, directly ask from leadership from that community about how we make it right. I think too often with an equity, when we have the equity lens, we think, oh, we're going to, you know, slap this kind of solution on it without actually hearing from the community, listening from the community. You know, another travesty in our homeless work here in the city is that there are very, very few black led organizations who get contracts from the city to serve homeless for our homeless community. In fact, there's none for our homeless families totally unacceptable. So for, for me coming into the mayor's office, I see this as an opportunity to one, make sure that the community voice is not just heard, but their leadership is sought after ex aggressively. And that <clears throat> we will respond to the data and to the storytelling and to the both the quantitative and qualitative data to, to ensure that, that we are addressing some of these um, issues that have gone on for far too long in our city. One of them um, that will be uh, hugely prioritized in an ECOHAWK administration is, is health equity. And I'm really proud that Dr. Ben Danielson is supporting our campaign. Um, him and my um, sister Abigail, who is a leading expert on, on health equity as well, I will be asking for their guidance and for um, us to be directly addressing two, two, um, two areas of, of big interest for me. One is, is that 11% of native babies in this city will die. We have an 11% infant mortality rate, which is unacceptable in a city like Seattle. And two, black, um, black um, mothers are five times more likely compared to their white counterparts to die during birth. So if we know those kinds of things, that means we like bring in our hospitals, we bring in, we, we, we support birth workers. I've been talking to black birth workers as part of this campaign. And we say to them, like, what do you need? How can we get more of you out there? And how can we make sure that the hospitals and birth centers are, you know, inviting you into this space? Those are just, th those two things are, are sort of things like to me, when I, when I hear those numbers, when we think about babies and children and mothers and, and families, like, let's 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 find ways to solve for that and let's and let's equity calls us to prioritize them to give them the resources to ask for their leadership and to and to lift them up and it it doesn't um i think the other thing about equity from like the mayor's office it it means like not giving up on community not thinking it's too hard you know i think some people think oh gosh that's a that's a bad that's a bad rate i i'm i'm not going to be able to do anything on that no it means fighting for them and that's why i think that a woman of color a person of color in the mayor's office will have a huge impact on our city and then i mean i keep keep going on this for a long time but the other thing i'll, I'll say too is that um we need to tear down the gatekeeping in the mayor's office and throughout the city you know and 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 it it's it's so set up in such a uh, I guess colonized way <laughs> that it, it it has inherent gatekeeping all over the place. I know that even you know me as a leader of a nonprofit because I got contracts in the city, it had its own gatekeeping attached to it. I want to find ways to tear those that gatekeeping down so that you know 
Emily, you can come to the mayor's office and easily have a meeting with the mayor instead of having, you know, it's always, you know, the, the, the powerful people who get to meet with the mayor. That's, that's not equity. Equity requires us to hear from the com communities that have been impacted the most, follow their leadership and resource them and understand um, that they have the solutions to the future. So um, thank you for asking such a beautiful question, something that's of, of such priority for me. And um, I, I can't wait to get in that mayor's office and, and invite the community in. Thank you, Colleen, for that. Um, and just a reminder for folks, if you are in the Zoom and would like to ask Colleen a question, feel free to raise your hand or uh, comment in the chat, um, or you know, feel free to just kind of un unmute and, and ask Colleen your question. Um, I will see what we have online for you. Um, a question from online. Okay. How are you planning to revitalize uh, small businesses so that customers uh, feel good about coming back, um, mm -hmm. especially in the South End? Yeah. Oh, what a, what a good question. You know, um, one of the things that is is really important for me it is is helping people feel safe on public transportation. Let me hit that first. Right. You know, right now, um, if you hop on the light rail or on the bus or um, on a trolley, you're still wearing a mask. And I, I know that I would do that too. I mean, I think that we're going to see, even once we get everyone vaccinated and COVID isn't so much of a, of a, of a threat, I think that people will still be wanting to wear a mask. I know, I know I will. And I think, you know, we have an opportunity ahead of us to really um, help people. The city should um, be helping people feel great and safe about coming back to work. Um, I look forward to supporting um, more ambassadors to welcome people um, as they come in um, and off come um, through neighborhoods as they come off of buses and other transportation systems and really support our small business community. You know, I spent uh, most of today, um, one in, in uh, the university district area and then I'm um, in Ballard um, talking to small business owners. And I look forward to coming down to the South End too. We have plans for that as well. And, and the thing I keep hearing over and over again is that they need um, better support from our Office of Economic Development. And, and I, um, I know that the Office of Economic Development is gonna get about $22 million. Um, in, in my, um, if I have the opportunity to, um, help us understand how the money should be spent. We'll be looking towards um, those folks who um, have been impacted the most, which we know Black, Black, Indigenous, and people of color communities had carried the brunt of COVID. And so we need to support some of those small businesses. We need to support folks who have been um, out there just trying to make it every single day and, and have struggled. And so um, I believe that small businesses are the lifeblood of our um, of our neighborhoods. They are a huge part of our economic um, engine. And um, I'm excited to support that. Um, in order to fully recover from the pandemic equitably, we really need small business to flourish. And we also need to be incubating small business I see this as a cool opportunity for our BIPOC community, and we'll be looking forward to supporting BIPOC-led organizations and BIPOC-owned organizations towards um, getting their small business up and running. Um, as mayor, I will commit to putting the full force of the Office of Economic Development behind supporting small business. Um, OED also needs more money. Um, we have that $22 million coming in from um, ARPA, but I also think that that more money um, should be coming available on the federal level. And I will go after every single dollar to make sure that we are getting that money into the hands of our community. I will also have a dedicated person um, in the mayor's office who will help coordinate all city departments with neighborhood business districts, um, just to really streamline all the levers and actions the city departments can, you, um, can use. Um, we wanna make sure that permitting um, is gonna go quickly and efficiently so that small businesses can you know, um, do street closures, have festivals, farmers markets, and other activations that bring folks around to your businesses. I also wanna explore um, supporting um, small businesses who are renting um, their space. Um, I think, you know, giving um, some small businesses six months to a year of, of, of subsidized rent could really help their business um, get out, um, flourish. 
Um, and then I also want to be hearing from the neighborhoods and hearing from the folks in the South End. We're going to be holding um, town halls within um, the South End um, and other and other places who, where small businesses are at to see what the city can do. Um, there's much more. Um, um, there's more ideas out there within the community, and I want to hear it. Um, I am so excited about activating more parks, side streets, and alley, alleys. I'm excited for um, restaurants and um, nightlife to really come back um, super strong. And i um, excited to work alongside the leaders of this community. Um, this is something that really gives me a lot of joy. I come from small business. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I was um, raised in a small motel that my grandma owned and I ended up, you know, uh, cleaning rooms and working the front desk. And I also own a small business here in Seattle. So um, it's a passion of mine. Um, and I look forward to having the opportunity to serve the city by supporting small business. Thank you so much, Colleen. Um, I'll just pause, see if there's any questions in our Zoom call. Sure. And I will check the chat. All right. If no, I will go ahead and check to see what we are looking at online. While you do um, that, Cindy, maybe yeah. I'll explain that. Um, I was very, very fortunate to go to um, a show on Saturday. I went to Nemo's in Capitol Hill um, and got to see LF, an amazing local funk band called Eldridge Gravy. They were unbelievable. There had to have been 500 plus people. Um, the, whole, the whole place was packed. And, um, you know, you looked around the room and there was just so much joy and excitement on people's faces just to be back in there um, and getting to listen to some great music and, and be out and about and activated. And in fact, Capitol Hill was just buzzing with activity. Um, I don't think we left Capitol Hill till like two o'clock. We couldn't find a place to eat. It was so packed. Um, but I'm sharing that with you all so that, that I, I really hope people will get out there, you know, it, however you feel safe. No, you don't make yourself anxious. Don't push yourself to, get to, to go out there into the nightlife. But if you feel good about it, like I invite you to and encourage you to go because it is such, um, I had such a good time. I know that I, afterwards, I just felt really um, rejuvenated um, and excited about, about the future. So um, highly recommend that. And um, really huge thanks to Numos for, um, and Eldridge Gravy. We had a phenomenal time. And I will um, pass it back to you, Cindy. Yeah, thank you, Colleen. Okay, the question I have for you from online is, um, uh, there's been a rash of gun violence in the South and in particular that does not seem to garner the media attention that other issues around the city have. Uh, what would you do to address that? Well, number one, let me say that I have been tracking that. And I have been feeling the impact of that. And in fact, we wrote an op-ed that hopefully will get published very soon about gun violence because um, the impact for um, everyone who's living out there on the South End for other you know, communities who are experiencing gun violence has been significant. And you know, that, um, you know, in my own family, I have had you know, gun violence um, occur. Sorry, my dog just like jumped up in here. She wants me to play with her, but it's time to talk about gun violence with you all. <laughs> and, and so it, it's something that, that hits really close to home. Um, I know that um, we have um, a lot of community out there right now who's been hurting. Um, I know that you know the, the, the mental health impact of COVID on our communities is not, we, we don't even fully understand that yet. Sorry, my dog is just like really wanting me to talk with her. Rizzo, I'm doing a town hall. Um, and so um, we, um, um, I want to invite people to check out our website where we talk about um, gun violence and we talk about what, what we can do and what we should do. Um, and and I'll, I'll share a little bit more. You know, um, one of the things that is, is been troublesome for me as someone who lives in the city is that we have not had enough focus on prevention. Um, and in Echo Hawk administration, we will focus on prevention and outcomes. My public safety plan calls for implementing a new office of crime prevention modeled after the very successful Oakland ceasefire program, which has successfully reduced gun violence by 50%. We have to be looking upstream. We have to be like supporting our youth, giving them every opportunity to, to be doing um, 
to be doing good things with their lives, positive things, lifting each other up in community. And so um, I am, I am, I'm really excited about the opportunity to create this new um, this new office that will that will work on crime prevention. Um, our strategy will also identify folks who have who are the highest risk of participating in serious violence and provide access to services from community-based organizations. You know, um, we have some brilliant, brilliant people in the city who are working on this issue. You know, community passageways, choose 180. Um, I think it's this is such the uh, the right time to be rethinking about what what um, um, crime prevention and also um, 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 crime prevention and um, and justice looks like in in our in our juvenile justice system as well. So this is this is an, an exciting opportunity to to create new systems to encourage and resource um, programs that are already out there working. Um, we also will deploy a crisis intervention through hospital based violence inter, um, intervention program. Um, this is. Um, you know the sad the sad state of affairs right now is that if you come to the hospital and you've um are you know been the victim of a of a violent crime gun violence gun violence or knife or something like that i'm um, right there at the hospital someone will work with you to talk about what the issue is and how they could be supporting you through case management um you're if you if you come to the hospital with some kind of incident like this you're 30 times more likely to come back with another issue of, um, of, of violence. So we have to truly focus on the root causes of violence through prevention, um, intervention, um, suppression, re-entry, and an equitable di distribution of resources. Um, I know that in the South End, you, we do not resource the South End in the way that we should. I can assure you as a mayor of the city, we will be resourcing Black-led organizations, Native-led organizations. We'll be asking for the wisdom of the community to help lead the way forward. Um, this is truly um, um, and a very important part. And the, and the, and the other thing I'm gonna to mention too, and I mentioned it at the beginning of this conversation is that mental health for our young people has got to be priori prioritized as we come out of COVID, not just for young people, but also for older people too, but, but our, our young people are hurting right now. Um, there was so much that was lost in COVID and, and we have, um, uh, we need to, we need to wrap our arms around them and assure them that, that they're okay. And that, that coming through this, they will be okay. And that their community is there to support them. I think one of the things a good major, um, a good mayor should do is to you know nurture and care and love for the love the city, and I bring that with um, with what I do. I love the city. I love our youth. The, one of the first jobs I ever had in the city was working um, as a um, um, well, an, edu an assistant in a classroom at American Indian Heritage High School Middle College. It was the first time I worked with homeless youth. And I believe in them so much, and I and I want to resource our community so that we can, so we can be thriving as, and our youth can be thriving as they come out of COVID. But we have to be real about where we're at right now, and and find ways to um, stop this gun violence, um, to give our community other options and opportunities, and to lift them up, and to remind them how amazing and significant and important they are. Um, I'll, I'll be a very different kind of mayor. I don't know if a lot of mayors talk about how much they. Um, um, I don't know. I, I've never been a mayor before, but I have um, I have the passion for our community and belief in our community and will resource that every chance I possibly can. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you. Okay. Doing the pause, making sure folks in the Zoom have the opportunity to ask their questions if they would like. All right. Wonderful. Rizzo, Rizzo has walked away, if anyone was wondering. She got, um, the, she got the idea that I was going to play with her. So she's gone uh, somewhere else. Um, great. Well, um, uh, speaking of sort of the gun violence that we were talking about in the South End, can you talk a little bit about your vision for policing? Mm. Yeah. You know, um, what has happened in our city is um, really a, a reflection of how our accountability system and, and police reform is failing. We have to be clear about that. We have to be honest about 
about where we're at. And, um, you know, as, as a, an executive director of a nonprofit who served a lot of um, homeless Native people, I can tell you that our Seattle Police Department um, have, um, have been um, using um, tremendous force. They are exhibiting biased policing and, you know, that's my that's my take on it as an executive director but we all saw over the summer what happened when things were seemingly you know out of control and police officers were covering their badges even though they had been directed not to and they were tear gassing children and riding a bike over someone's head that is unacceptable and as mayor of the city i will um i will do two two really important things um for a city well let's say three um because we, we talk about it in our plan this way we talk about a new new contract new chief new culture um the contract right now that was signed in two that was implemented in 2018 pushed back reforms so we need to have um, an, um, someone who will stand with the community and ensure that those reforms are not pushed back any further, and that we and that we gain that we gain um, um, that we change the contract for the better and bring back what um, we lost. Um, you know, I stood at the community police commission. I'm a commissioner. We um, begged city council and the mayor's office to not take on this contract, and we were not listened to. When I talk about listening to community, it's because I have been there on the other side of it when no one would listen to us. And we would plead and, and say, this is going to be a bad, this is going to be bad for our community. And no one heard us, but we were proven right so sadly. I wish we were not proven right, but over the summer, we saw it happen. So we have to be able to negotiate a new contract. Another important part will be I'm hiring a chief of police. I will hire a chief of police who will not allow bad cops to be out there working with the public. Um, it's important to um, have a chief who, who will truly do that and understand that because right now the way our system works is that if a chief disciplines an officer and then fires that officer, they can take that to an arbitration board. And often the arbitration board will overturn that um, discipline, will overturn the firing of that officer. That comes back to the chief and then he or she um, are dealing with um, the Im impact of that. And that makes them more hesitant to try to discipline officers. I will be asking our next chief of police directly, how will you handle those situations? And, and I want them to um, affirm to me that they will discipline, even if it has to go through the arbitration board. If that person, if that person comes through the arbitration board and they have to come back into the Seattle um, Police Department, we will never allow that person to interact with the public. They will be behind a desk. They will be, you know, shuffling paperwork. They will not be with our beloved community out there on the streets. I have been the victim of biased policing. I have seen it happen over and over again in Seattle Police Department. And I can't, we cannot allow for officers who are going to behave that way to be out there. So a new chief and new contractor are a huge part of it. And then a new culture, you know, I think every single police officer is, that is out there should be community police officers, that they should be dedicated to our community. They should know our community and they should be um, supporting our communities and in, in wonderful um, ways that, that show that they have respect and honor for every single person who lives in the city. Um, I also think it's time for us to really be doing recruitment right from Seattle. Um, many of our officers, 80% of them do not live in Seattle. So I'll be asking our chief of police to be thinking about new recruitment strategies so that our police officers come directly from our community. So they're part of, of us. Um, this is a time for, um, the mayor will have an amazing responsibility the next four years. One, you'll get to, um, hopefully I will get to um, um, fulfill the consent decree and get that, um, the consent decree completely um, fulfilled. And then use that consent decree fulfillment as a platform to transform Seattle Police Department. I think Seattle should be a place where people from around the world want to know what we do and how our Seattle Police Department works and, and, and what that and, and how the community and the Seattle Police Department, the council, the mayor's office have come together because we love our community. So um, I invite you to check out our 
um, website. We have a lot of um, more details on the website about um, uh, police reform, about transforming the police department, and um, about public safety. It is time for us to 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 truly transform this to serve our communities and um and and to not tolerate any kind of um bad bad behavior from cops um that's where we're heading and i thank you so much for the question all right well we are wrapping up our evening together so i'll give one last opportunity for folks to ask questions again in the zoom if you'd like and i will also see if there's any final questions online i don't believe there are i think we got through all of them Okay, wonderful. Well, Colleen, do you have any last minute words that you would like to say? I do. You know, I just want to say thank you to um, Cindy and Reed for their continued support of these town halls. Um, thank you, Emily, for being a part of this one with us and hosting. Um, I believe so much in the future of Seattle. This is a city that has done so many wonderful things. I am looking forward to be a, just to being a city that continues to um, continues to innovate, continues to believe in the community, and and we should be the city from a, that people know of, from around the world that has you know solved the crisis of homelessness. That has become a truly affordable city where everyone can live, and where everyone knows that they um that they that they belong here. Um, we've gone through some very hard things this past, um, I like to say five years, five and a half years, because we had to deal with Trump before, before COVID. It is time for us to, um, to come back, to heal, um, to find um, reconciliation, and, and become the kind of city that we talk about. We are a progressive, compassionate, generous city. We are a Coast Salish city. I want to um, pay my respect to the Coast Salish tribes and whose lands we're on right now. And I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Um, the Coast Salish tradition says I lift my hands to you. So I lift my hands to all of you out there and hope that um, you have a beautiful night. I hope your dog's behaving a little better than mine is. And um, I thank you so much for having this opportunity. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. And if you are so inclined, we are having an Indigenous celebration tomorrow in Carkeek Park. We hope to see you there. You can find more information on our Facebook. Uh, but other than that, thank you so much for coming um, and we will see you another time.